right, so today we're going to be talking about a very uh, short topic. Uh, the original lecture got lost. I'm re-recording this. It shouldn't take too long. So one of the big problems we have when walking at a level, let's say you, you know, you're like trying to make some sort of like maze or something with, uh, let's see, let's see here. Let's say you're trying to like, you know, gray box at a level, you know, you're just like, like putting some walls next to each other and you know, just kind of, you know, sketching out where things are going to go and stuff like that. There's a problem with this, and the problem is that your textures don't line up, right? So that's too short. Let's, let's go right there. Good. Okay. So if we look at this, you can see that there is a seam, a noticeable seam, where these textures come together, and it doesn't doesn't look good. And if we overlap things like this, then in fact you get like some Z fighting here, um, and so you have to like kind of like move things around and make sure they're not like overlapping at all. And, if you leave a little gap like that, it looks bad too. So you have to like make sure everything's snapped to grid properly. And even still, you've got these like really ugly seams and things like that on it. Even worse is if you um, scale these things out. So if you take this and scale it out, then the texture is like stretch out like really wide. It looks really bad. And one thing that I've shown you guys in the past is how to um, use a material instance with a scale parameter on it. If I uh, drag this off to the side and uh, let's see here, don't snap, please. All right, if I drag this up and down, you can see like I can adjust the scale, but even still with the scale adjusted, we still have these seams and it's still kind of distorted too. So I'm going to show you guys a better way of doing this. And, and it's something called using a world aligned texture. So I'm going to take the um, uh, this brick material that I got here, I'm going to right click and I'm going to duplicate it. And I'm going to say, what up? I can't have this space in it. What up, world line texture? Why not? It's funny. Okay. And so we've got our material here. And uh, before we do that, let's just uh, apply it to these things here and here so that when we make changes, we will be able to see it. Snap it over here. Zoom in a little bit. Okay, so what we're going to do is right now we've got a text chord node and it's being multiplied by the scale parameter. And so we can sort of like manually scale things and it's just really a pain. There's just a better way of doing it. So I'm going to get rid of all this stuff here. Uh, that can stay, the normal map can stay, but it's not going to be just like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a node called world align texture. Like that. And uh, I'm going to show you guys what these mean here. I'm going to start off with not the one I'm going to finish with, just to kind of show you what it looks like. And it's giving me an error because I'm missing a texture object. You might be like, well, I'll just attach a texture sample to the texture object. But you can't because it's not a texture object. So what you need to do is right click on this. And if you didn't see that, right click on this and choose convert to texture object. And then we can hook that up. Boom, like that. And then for the normal map, we'll use what's called a world aligned normal. And it's going to work just the same way. The texture sample, right click, convert to texture object, plug it in. Yeah. And again, I'm going to use the Z version of this, even though that's not what I'm actually going to use in practice. And I'll line these guys up because I like having my stuff lined up. And we'll just pull that over to there, just make it look a little nicer. And there you go. So that's basically it. Uh, these things are going to change. But now what you see here is not. Um, uh, this doesn't look good, right? And the reason why it looks like this is because I selected Z texture. So what that means is it's taking a picture of the um, cobblestones and it's projecting it downwards along the Z axis. Kind of like, uh, imagine you have an LCD projector and the LCD projector is on the roof pointed downwards and it's shining a uh, picture of the cobblestones on these walls. All the walls that have the... Um, the same texture on it are getting the same picture shot down from the heavens basically on it. And you can see, look, there's no, there's no seams. There's no tiling issues. Uh, the scale, even though the scale is really big, everything's at like the base size on it, which might actually be a little bit small. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually make the base uh, cobblestones a little bit bigger. They look a little bit too small for me and they're tiling really, uh, kind of annoyingly. So I'm going to drag out from here for the texture size, because what you can do is you can actually set the size of the cobblestones forever and ever. 
and so they never change. No matter how you scale the um, the boxes, uh, they won't change in size. Here, watch what I mean by that. So, um, if I were to make this thing bigger, zoom in a little bit, you see the thing doesn't stretch. Instead, what happens is that there's just more of them, right? So those things don't get any bigger. It just tiles more and more of them, which is what we want usually in most in most cases. We actually usually don't want our texture stretching because it looks bad. Okay, so I'm going to pull out from here and I'm going to choose a um, a vector. Um, use a vector parameter, I guess, or a vector. You know, I'll use a parameter. Why not? And this will be the uh, texture size. And uh, the values for this, uh, they look like they're RGB values, but they're not. These are actually just literally the size in centimeters that the texture is going to scale over. So in other words, every 100 centimeters, we're going to get one copy of the uh, uh, the picture of the cobblestones. And if I do that, then you'll see the cobblestones get bigger. Hey, pretty cool, right? And if I want, again, these things are not RGB values. They just look that way. So if I make it like 300, 300, 300, 300, that's actually really large. There you go. You can see the cobblestones get really big. And no matter how I scale this thing out, you can see that there are just more cobblestones added. They never stretch. They're always 300 by 300 by 300 for that one picture. That that picture right there, this picture right here, is always going to be on a three meter uh, surface. So, and if I unselect it, you can see there are no seams. Yay, that's nice. And even if you have a weird intersection like that, it's fine. And even better, if I overlap it, we don't get Z fighting anymore. Why? Because they're the exact same um, texture at the exact same point. It doesn't matter which one of the two it picks. Um, it'll just draw one of them. So you can actually just block out everything and, and nothing looks terrible, except for the edges here, right? And the reason why they look this bad, I already told you, it's because we're doing the Z texture. So the one that you're probably going to want to pick in most cases is just X, Y, Z. So uh, if we do just X, Y, you can see what that's going to look like. It's going to project it on the X, Y axis, but not on the Z axis. Oh, 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 shoot. <laughs> There we go. Sorry, try that one more time. X, Y on the normal. There we go. X, Y on base color. X, Y on normal. It looks like it's <laughs> plaid, you know. Um, and so now you can see that uh, everything is being projected along the X axis and the Y axis, but the Z axis is all a giant smeary mess. So we probably just want to use X, Y, Z. That's my most common use for this. X, Y, Z. And if we do that, then it'll be projected. It says if you have a, uh, a light projector projecting a picture of the cobblestones down upon the wall in each of the three axes. And everything just kind of looks nice. And that's it. That's all there is uh, to make what up world line texture. And uh, it's set to not metal. It's roughness is fairly on the low side. And that's it. So that's all you can do. And then I can do things like this. I can just... I can just make that wall bigger if I want. I can move it around. And you can notice that as I move it, um, the the rocks actually don't move, right? As I slide it up and down, the, rock, the, the individual cobblestones actually don't move. The object moves, but the rocks stay in place. And so that's what makes them so nice. There's no seam here at all. There's no seam here either. And, uh, oh, the texture size. <laughs> that's why it looks weird with these... Uh, uh, like brick patterns on the bricks, it's because you also have to hook up the texture size to the texture size. And boom, like that, then you will see that the normals are gonna match up. There we go. So the normals now look good rather than, I mean, it was kind of interesting though. It's actually probably kind of a cool bug um, having like bricks on your bricks and stuff like that. What's up, dog? Or you like bricks on your bricks? So I put a brick on your bricks so you can brick them in the brick. And there you go. That's, uh, that's basically it. So, world blind textures. Super cool, awesome sauce, and you can just sit there and just scale things around and move them around to your heart's content. And you can see that the, the object slides, but the cobblestones don't, right? The, the object actually has the bricks like kind of sliding along them, which kind of is a cool look. And then you also don't have to be super cautious about overlapping it. Like you can just kind of like smash it in there. And it doesn't matter because everything lines up. You don't have to worry about seams anymore. All right, that's it guys. Thanks a lot. See you next time.